Simon Garfield writes what he calls books about small things that mean a lot. In the past, he's written about the history of chemical dyes, about wrestling, about Radio 1. His last two books were about typefaces and about the history of maps. Now he's written to the letter. He calls it a journey through a vanishing world. It's a history of letters and letter writing from the earliest days right down to the present, when emails, texts and social media are threatening the very existence of old-fashioned snail mail. Simon Garfield, you, you start this book really by saying that letter writing and the art of letter writing is dying. Why? Obvious reasons, I'm afraid, and the answer is email. Um, it's, email is, you know, I, I, I was very keen with the book not to sort of write an anti-email book because I use it all the time, and what's the point? And it, it's transformed our world. But what we don't do is write in any sort of depth. I don't think we express uh, our, our emotions as we would in a letter. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, the idea of writing a letter for my kids in particular, why would they want to do that? Well, get an envelope and, uh, you know, and a stamp, and then, and then uh, you have to write neatly, and then you go to post, and you'd miss the post, and it would cost you, you know, sort of, and that's the reason it's dying, unfortunately. It's, 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 it's efficiency, and, and we're used to the technology now. Your contention, though, is that that has changed qualitatively the way in which people write and communicate to sort of defend that asser asser assertion. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, again, it's a, it's a fairly kind of simple thing, really. The wonderful thing about letters, it makes you think more. There's a slow, I say in the book, there's a slower cerebral whirring of your brain. You amass information over time. You put it down in a more careful way because it's just you and, and the hand, the physical thing, uh, I think is important as well. So my, I mean, my big concern, my real reason for, for writing the book, I think, was how are we going to um, sort of catalogue our past? How are we going to tell our history through emails? Uh, and I think that's the, 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 the crucial question. You know, we say, oh, well, of course, you know, e emails will be there, but will they be there once we destroy our computer? Will our relatives find anything? You know, they won't find printed emails in the attic. How will historians be able to access, you know, our, 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 our disk drives on computers? That, that, that's the thing I'm concerned about. Um, there's lots in here, um, quotations from famous letter writers, from you know, Pliny writing about the eruption of Vesuvius and the destruction of Pompeii, Madame de Sévigny, a great 17th century French gossip, I suppose you'd call her, um, Napoleon, letters from Napoleon, Jane Austen. Why are Jane Austen's letters so dull? <laughs> okay, so that's a chapter title. Um, it's, uh, there, it, it's, it's interesting, and not everyone would agree with this. It's an opinionated book as well. Um, one reason, I think, is she wrote her letters in her books very much. You know, her, her books have a great grounding in, uh, in, in cor uh, correspondence. One or two actually began as letters, and Lady Susan is still that, that f f format. Um, I think one reason is because uh, she clearly didn't... Um, she was in, in very, very close contact with almost all the people she she wrote to uh, Cassandra, for instance. And the un another other reason is that when she died, Cassandra burnt a lot of letters that would actually be far more interesting and far more uh, intimate. And, and that's obviously the other, you know, the other thing. I suppose that's, you could argue, you know, that what I said at the beginning, you could, you could say, well, actually, uh, that's one great thing about sort of emails. They're harder to burn. There are more copies out there if you can find them. Some of the um, most moving letters you quote are letters of condolence or letters around death. Uh, you, you talk about the suicides of two great uh, 20th century authors, Virginia Woolf and, and Sylvia Plath, both of whose suicides um, were, were striking in various ways. The letters from the bereaved husbands, Leonard Woolf and Ted Hughes, who gets a terribly bad press, um, those are actually very, very touching. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't get a bad press from me. Um, and I kind of, I make the point in the book that had actually a lot of those letters come out earlier, his reputation uh, wouldn't, w you know, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be, be so harsh, I think. Um, yeah, no, it, fantastic point. And, and there's, a, there's a kind of personal route. I mean, my parents died um, when, when, I was, when I was young. So those condolence letters were the first ones that I remember coming through sort of en masse. You know, and obviously you get letters every day. 
Uh, but the idea of a big bulk coming through, you know, almost jamming the layer to box, I remember those very clearly. And I was, I was a stamp collector. And uh, so I kind of thought, uh, okay, well, this is quite interesting. Oh, look, there's a condonance letter from, um, you know, Argentina or wherever it was. So that uh, makes it more, more interesting. So they had a personal resonance with me. Uh, and obviously condonance letters are, are one of the few that um, have survived. And we still write condonance letters. I think it would have to be very... You have to have a very, very hard heart to write a condolence email. Although, how long, you know? How, how long before that becomes the, the norm as, as well? Love letters. Um, you quote a lot of love letters. And what, the thing that holds the book together is a sequence of love letters written by a man called Chris Barker, who was serving in the Second World War with the British Army in the Middle East from 1943 to 45. The letters he wrote back to the woman... Bessie Moore, who eventually became his life. They're the ordinary correspondence of um, uh, 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 passionate people, people who become passionate. Um, and you only, it was only by chance, really, that they ended up in the book. Yes, I, I, was, I, I was about, I don't know, you know, three quarters, four fifths of the way through the book, through writing the book, when I kind of realised that what I really wanted were, um, uh, was a correspondence between two people who were unknown. As you say, lots of famous people in the book. And I'd asked around, and I also wanted something that was unpublished, lots of you know, unknown people whose, who, whose, whose letters have, 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 have you know, made light of day. Um, and so I'm a, a trustee of the Mass Observation uh, Organization, and I called up on an off chance. And I know we mostly have journals, but you know, do you know of you know, an unpublished? And uh, the woman I talk, talk to who runs the organization said, funnily enough, Two weeks ago, we received this fantastic archive. Do you want to come and have a look? And I had a look. And it is a remarkable thing. I was, I was in tears when I read the letters. I mean, what I use is very much an edited um, ver, ver, version of them. But an extraordinary thing. And I thought, though, this is absolutely what I need to really demonstrate what we're going to lose. And I threaded them through the book as an example. And you learn, hopefully, you, you learn as you go along, as if you were reading you know, a letter, and then there's more news, and then there's more news, rather than me tell the whole story at the beginning. And, uh, yeah, for me, it also kind of holds the book um, together. And we know it has a... We know the outcome has a happy... happy, uh, happy uh, uh, sorry, we know the story has a happy outcome because, you know, they, they got married, very happily married, had kids, and it's from the kids that, that, that you know, I obtained the, uh, the letters. Simon Garfield, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Nick. <laughs>